Hey cultists, welcome to a new video series where we're going to paint Cult of Paint's very own woodsman figure. This was one of my favourite characters from our Deogard Kickstarter. Depending on when you're watching this video, you might be waiting for your model to arrive, or you might have received your Kickstarter, or you might have never seen this model before. If you haven't, then check the link in the description below and you'll be able to buy this figure if you want to follow along with this tutorial. We're actually going to begin this tutorial, perhaps unusually, with the base first. And the reason for that is I wanted to do a really elaborate base and in all honesty, I had some ideas that I wasn't sure would work. So I wanted to try them first as I knew I would be more comfortable with the figure itself. I painted quite a few of the box arts for the Kickstarter and despite being one of my favourites, it took me a long time to actually get around to this figure. I probably owned it for almost a year before actually beginning recording these tutorials and starting the model. The reason for that was I didn't have a specific idea that I felt was unique or cool enough to warrant a figure that's so important to me. It was one of my favourite designs in concept and obviously it being part of my own range. Yeah, it just means a lot to me and I definitely wanted to put my own stamp on it. Whereas the other figures, I did have a clear vision, especially with the wolf and the hunter. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with those two, so I was able to crack on with that straight away. Dave Colwell and Jamie George did such an amazing job of the box art of the woodsman. I knew I had to have my own unique take on it and uh, do something different, you know. Actually, Jamie, as well as being a talented miniature painter, helped with a lot of the graphics and the aesthetic of the Deo Guard. So a massive shout out to him. He was a huge help with everything. And he actually created these graphics for all of the characters. And one that I really enjoyed was the one for the woodsman. And it had these different trees and it looked like he was sort of at the front of the woods and had these, uh, you know, trees going far back behind him. And that got my brain going uh, with something that I wanted to do. I also wanted to take advantage of the fact that it had a severed head option. And years ago, and I mean really years ago, when I almost just got back into miniature painting, I did a Conrad Kurz model and I played with a kind of vertical blood drop effect, which was quite successful. But I wanted to take that a step further and see if I could do something with water and blood running through the water. Somebody might have done this already, but I couldn't actually find an example of where someone had already done what I had in mind. So I had all these ideas whirring in the background. I knew I wanted lots of trees surrounding him and I knew I wanted to do water effects with blood in it, but I didn't have the exact vision of the composition or the inspiration to go ahead and pull the trigger. During the various lockdowns in Britain, there were times where there really wasn't much to do, but we were allowed to go outside. And me and my great friend, Rich Marlowe, used to go to these awesome woods just to get a break from the city and yeah, just kind of walk around and, and get outside. And I absolutely loved going around here because I really like the woodland environment and there were all these super mossy areas and sort of density of moss I'd never really seen before. Some of them looked like mini ferns and there was all this super thick moss and I just really liked being there during that horrible time of all our lives. So all these things were in the back of my mind for a long time and I finished one of my projects and thought, now is the time to get this one started. It's also been a goal of mine to do a piece with a backdrop. I love miniatures when they have backdrops. Uh, one of my favorite pieces of all time is kind of made because of the backdrop. And to be honest, it's something I've always been not hugely afraid of, but I don't feel like an expert in this. I've never done any two dimensional art. I was just a miniature painter doing war games miniatures and I've grown this into something I really like and like to push myself, but I've never done anything 2D. So I was worried that I wouldn't be able to do a good job. So I guess I've always put off doing something even though I really wanted to. 
So before starting, I felt like this was a very ambitious project. I was doing a backdrop, a huge woodland base, trying to do a, a huge moss effect. It was gonna have a lot of water, blood effects I've never tried before. So yeah, this felt like it was gonna be quite an experimental and difficult project to do. But one day I decided now is the time to go on this adventure. I always think it's fantastic to push yourself now and again, sometimes just relax, but for me, I definitely get more of a buzz when I try new things and take myself to maybe the next level or just trying some other things. That was a bit of a long-winded background, but hopefully you enjoyed that and my thought process, and we'll relate back to this in the tutorial. But now we'll begin the actual tutorial and we're gonna start with the construction of the base itself. I knew I wanted to create the illusion or the feeling of a very dense forest. I knew I was going to do this with a real branches and obviously the backdrop would add some other elements and depth to the forest. It was really important I had the right sizes of the twigs so that I would create the sense that it was part of a very large forest. So I didn't want tiny spindly trees, I wanted them to feel big and that it was part of this enormous forest and it was just a snapshot of something larger. This meant I had to get them big enough so it would seem bigger than the figure, but not stupid and overpowering. I'm lucky that I have a lot of woodland nearby, so one day I just went for a wander in there, looking around trying to find the right sort of thing, and I actually found a tree that had fallen over, and the roots were sticking out, and they were really dry, and they looked kind of perfect, so I grabbed some of those, and took them home and just kind of started playing around with ideas for the composition. I grabbed way too many twigs because you never know what you're gonna need to make your vision come to life. So to be honest, I just start messing around with some ideas, putting various sticks on the plinth to try and get a sense of what could work. I tried to start with one main tree that would be the largest and then I thought I could add some additional smaller ones once I was happy with that. When I was happy I super glued them in place. I do use super glue accelerator which means you don't have to hold them there for ages and it also makes the bond quite weak so it's easy to break if you aren't happy later. With the largest element in place, I just played around with adding additional ones. Like I said, I wanted it to feel really busy and dense. So it was important to me that the composition, yeah, just felt full. So I took my time to try different things out and make sure I was happy with all the locations of these things. You're trying to make it look as natural as possible, of course. Obviously, I needed a great place for the figure to stand. So I tried to create these large roots that could act like steps that the figure would be standing on. And I wanted to make sure the figure obviously had the correct height and was in the center of the base. So you have to bear in mind how your figure is gonna work with your composition too. When I had a basic idea that I was happy with, I used some milliput to fill the gaps and blend in the different trees I'd stuck together. You're never gonna get them to fit perfectly, so always think about using some putty to make it work for you. You don't have to be an amazing sculptor to achieve this, but it's actually quite easy to follow the sort of texture you get on trees. And I knew I was going to be covering it a lot with moss and I could paint on some tree texture as well. So I knew I could hide any imperfections and things like that. I roughly get the correct volume for the tree so that it flows nicely. And then I switched tools and tried to move my sculpting tool in the direction of the wood grain. Then it's always gonna sort of blend in a little bit better. But it's quite intuitive this, so don't worry about it too much, even if you've not tried sculpting before. And you can always do a first rough layer, then cut and sand it and add some additional texture if you feel you need to anyway. I added an additional large tree to the right hand side as I feel I needed it, but it wasn't quite as big as the main one, but I felt having this kind of left and right framing really helped with the composition. 
Then I made sure the figure fitted and added pins so I could always get him in the exact right spot when I was removing him. You can also use Milliput here to make sure the feet sit perfectly flush with anything you've created. I wanted to paint some vines on the backdrop and as you can see I added some physical ones that would be in the foreground just using some much thinner roots and I stuck these to the backdrop and tried to hide them behind the other branches. I also wanted to bulk out the ground as it wasn't just going to be trees straight into the ground so I used some cork bark here. Uh, this isn't the cork sheet, it's the actual bark and this is fantastic for rocks. So I just break off various chunks in different sizes and try to make it fit in with the base and once I'm happy, glue them in place. On the smaller tree I also added some finer roots and again this was with some actual roots so you need a good variety of different thicknesses when you go foraging for these things. Again I add some milliput to just blend everything together and it also helps keep it really secure. So, you know, you don't have to do this in one go. I try and do these in a couple sessions, keep adding the milli putt and just make sure you're happy. I used the leftover milli putt to add some smaller pebbles to the ground. I knew this was going to be a riverbed that I wanted to be busy with lots of varying sized rocks. And I wanted these to be rounded where they'd obviously worn down as we find in a riverbed normally. Later in the painting process, I added a lot of additional pebbles, so you don't have to go crazy here, but just having some is cool, I think. I added some normal sand just to fill out the bottom and have some texture on it, and it was all looking pretty good. I cut off some of the branches to make them flat to the sides, and I also added a bit of milliput to that, as I wanted it to be completely flush to the base. And the last thing I kind of had to do for the preparation was sand the sides. There's going to be a lot of sanding with this, uh, but uh, yeah, I just started to make sure that was completely flush and I thought that branch would be a really good area to support the barrier I was going to use for my water effects. It's worth noting that my backdrop plinth is a prototype made by the awesome James Taro at Taro Model Maker and he produced our Cult of Paint backdrop plinth, which we're super proud of. And yeah, this was a prototype, so you can see it's actually made of wood underneath, whereas yours will be a wonderful black resin. With all that complete, I add the figure, double check it fits again as, you know, you really want it to be a smooth thing when you link these two things together. I was gonna paint the base separately, paint the figure separately so I really need to make sure that uh, they work together. The last thing I did was add some more rocks just to fill out the bottom. It would be fine to leave that empty but I thought actually it's going to be really difficult to access that with a paintbrush so I'll fill out the bottom of that with rocks and it also helps to justify why the roots are going in the shape they are as they're going over the large rocks. I think this looks a lot nicer, filling out that blank space and keeping it nice and busy. So that is actually the completion of my base construction. Looking at it finished, I'm really happy with the composition. I really like how the two main trees are left and right of the piece, so it really frames the figure in between. I left one of them really long and you can see it sticks out further than the backdrop and for me that kind of is supposed to give the sense that these trees are much higher than what you see so actually the point they stop isn't the point they really stop if you see what I mean. The way the figure is dead central you know elevated above where the water's going to be uh, I think just looks really cool and it's lucky that the horns fit perfectly within the width of the backdrop. I was really happy when I got to this point. When you go into something like this, you always have a vision, but sometimes it's difficult to fulfill that vision, you know? But I guess in some ways this turned out better than I expected, and it gives me the sense that I wanted, that this is a huge tree and he's kind of dwarfed by this woodland, but it creates such a perfect center stage for the figure 
Of course, with basing, it's supposed to support the figure and not take away from it. But in this project, I knew the base was a huge important element. This gave me such a buzz because I went from going, yeah, I want to paint this figure and yeah, I'll try and make it work to being like, okay, this is cool. I'm super happy with the composition of this base and all my other ideas that I wanted to achieve on it started buzzing and ticking and it made me just want to dive straight into painting, which is such a nice feeling for when you're painting figures. I hope you enjoyed this first part in a quite extensive series of tutorials. In the next part, we're going to paint the background, so the two-dimensional painting of the backdrop, which was what I was most worried about, so I knew I needed to get this done and out of the way. The conclusion of the video is to go and find yourself lots of natural products, have a real think about what you want to do composition-wise, and just take your time to piece something together if it doesn't work, just come back to it and you might come back to it with some nicer ideas and you can kind of cut and paste any natural things and fill them in between with putty. But don't be afraid to just take your time and try and make things work. Let some putty try, come back to it and just keep working at it. Also seek out other people's opinions. It's quite tricky to get compositions interesting and I go back and forth with people I know to see if they like what I've done. Really excited to share the whole process of this with you guys and I'm looking forward to the next video. Please leave a comment if you've enjoyed it and you're looking forward to seeing what happens next. Until then, see you next time.